Well, welcome to Tea Time, and that's right, Miss Liz is back, and you know what that means. That means we have a new TEA sitting in the back room. So I have the amazing Kim Lang Langling in the back, and she has some good news because she got a proof. We're going to talk about a little bit about that. Uh, as I st stated this afternoon with uh, Kath and Jennifer, we have Paul's on the couch and we have paw prints on the kitchen floor so she's going to talk about that and some good news coming out and all that good stuff but before we get you to enjoy tonight's tea time we're going to get you over to miss liz's youtube channel give that little doorbell a ring uh you can watch these tea times at any time during uh, in the morning afternoon evening uh in the comfort of your home while you're driving your car or if you just want to pick her up. There's over 300 interviews that you can enjoy on Miss Liz's YouTube channel. So let's get the disclaimer out there. I'm going to get a little bit of bio and then I'm going to come in here and we're going to serve you a tea of nuggets of hope. That's right. It's There's a different type of tea tonight. So get prepared for that. So the disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought for forward for any tea time show hosted by myself miss liz is always brought forward in good faith however may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform the facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing all tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion the content brought forward may include discussions where for some where they may be emotionally at risk it's significant to know that the show is engaging in the in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect your wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea time shows are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless it's a surprise, rescheduled, or a special tea time, which are done on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So now a little bit about my guest. Well, who's my guest? First of all, well, my guest is Kim Langling, and she's a multi-published author. Kim shares her profound love for nature and animals, her journey through PTSD, and her mission to spread nuggets of hope through her writing and podcasting. Kim is the lead author and coordinator for, of multiple anthologies, including the When Hope Found Me series and the recent Paw Prints on the Couch, which has skyrocketed to become an Amazon number one top new release. Don't miss out her upcoming releases, Paw Prints on the Kitchen Floor, which we'll be talking about tonight. Um, and coming out August 24th, Nuggets and Nuggets of Hope, November 2024. In addition to her writing, Kim hosts the empowering podcast, Let Fear Bounce, where she spotlights inspiring individuals who have faced their fears and made a difference in the world through various creative en endeavors. When she's not writing or podcasting, you can find Kim enjoying a cup of coffee, coffee, diving into a good book, or taking a long walk with her beloved dog, Dexter. And we're going to talk about Dexter because I did some work, some homework on Dexter. So let me get Kim in here and let's spill some nuggets of hope tonight with all of you. Welcome, Kim. Hello. How are you? I am awesome. Um, we were having fun in the back there. So we're a few seconds late tonight, guys, because we were talking about a couple of things that I want to bring up later in the show. So, Kim, before we get started, I'm going to take you way back to who you were as a little girl and who you are now as a grown woman. So you're asking me who I was as a little girl? Yes. <laughs> I forgot to say who, right? When, when, who, what? 
<laughs> is there a question mark in there? <laughs> um, as a little girl, got, you know, that's an interesting question. Who was I? I don't know. Um, I was just, just little, <laughs> you know, th- you know, here's an interesting thing. Um, a few years ago, I, I did an exercise of writing a letter to my five-year-old self. And that was a pretty tough one. It was a hard exercise to look back and look at my five-year-old self. Cause that's when my parents got divorced. I didn't understand why daddy left. And, um, it was me, my sister and my brother. And I, you know, you're five, I didn't get it. And I realized that that was, that was way more impactful on my life than I realized, but you don't see that until you're looking at it with an adult size, but writing a letter to my five-year-old self was interesting because I was asked, you know, when you, when you do this praxis, when you do this exercise, what would you say to your five-year-old self? And so writing this letter as an exercise, therapeutic exercise for me, um, it was interesting to, to, to look back at that little, that little munchkin and say, you know, life is going to be so hard at times, but you're not the only one that life is hard for, but you're going to make it. You're going to get through it and you're going to do some really cool things. You're going to meet amazing people and you're going to be okay. And don't forget that on that bumpy journey, you're, you're actually going to be okay. It was a, it was, it was hard. So I look back at that little one and wish nothing but the best for her, you know? And then as, as a, as an adult now in a, had a certain season of life that I'm in, that's how I like to say it. I'm at a certain season. Um, I've seen that everything that I've experienced or gone through were stepping stones to get me to where I'm at now. Cause otherwise I wouldn't be wanting to do a lot of what I do unless I had the experiences that I went through. And some of them, they're not anything that you would ever wish on anyone, but sometimes the worst of times are what make you stronger and strongest. Yeah. So and, and do you think that your little girl, when you wrote that five year, that letter to the five year old, that it got you into writing what you're writing today? It probably, I was already writing along the, the kind of what I write now, mostly it's mostly nonfiction, 90% nonfiction doing that letter. It was actually just within the last, I think it was actually pre COVID. So it was probably five or six years ago. Um, doing that. I think it helped me to clarify a few things. And when I write, I, I think a little differently now and I bring in all five senses much more than I probably did before. And for me, that's a, that's a must. Because if I'm not going to feel anything when I'm writing it, the reader's not going to feel anything. (laughs) I want my readers to be able to smell what I'm talking about, to hear what I'm talking about, to, to remember, you know, what it feels like when you're hugging your dog and what that fur feels like under your fingers, you know? So I think that, that exercise writing to my five-year-old self, it brought in a lot more than I foresaw. Well, and that's what we talked about this afternoon uh, with uh, Kath and Jennifer is we want, when we're writing a book, we want the readers to feel, right? And smell, like you said, to get the senses in there. But you're the first person to say you put the five senses in there, uh, you know? I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's helpful. <laughs> and once you start doing it, it's, it's kind of an automatic. And, you know, there's a word. I just love words and I love interesting words. And there's a word that I learned several years ago. The word is Scytherism. I had never heard of it. And I was like, what an interesting word. I like how that feels coming out of my mouth. (laughs) Scytherism. (laughs) It's a nice flow, right? (laughs) It's it's a soft, it's a soft, gentle word. Scytherism. It's like a whisper. And I was like, I got to look up what that is. So I looked it up. And it is the sound the wind makes as it blows through leaves on trees. Oh, wow. And I went, 
that is one of the most beautiful words I think I've ever heard then, citharism, because I kept saying it sounds, it feels like, it feels like a whisper. And then I realized it is a whisper. It's the wind whispering through leaves on trees, citharism. And I've never forgotten that feeling and excitement when that all came together in my head like that. So I try and do that when I'm writing. I'm like, okay, can I make this feel like a citharism? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think it's a nice word. It is. It's isn't it? It's a gentle. It's, it's a gentle. gentle. Word. It is like a whisper, right? Yes. I love it. And I love yeah. learning words like that. And that's one that has always stuck with me because it's it's also peaceful. Because the word itself, once you know the meaning of it, you will not ever forget it every time you hear the leaves doing their little dance when there's a breeze going through. The, the I'm going to think of you, Kim. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I've written, I've written a story. It was published in a magazine. I've written a story about Sithra. It's called the song, the song of the wind. Oh, and it was all about Sitharism. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure song. even how that, how that came about. <laughs> I don't even know where I was coming from with that, but there you have it. Sitharism folks, new word for you. Word of the day. <laughs> And that's what we do here on, on Tea Time is we bring words and stories to the table. There we go. You know, and that's why, and that's why I ask all my guests what their tea is and get words from because I like words, and I like to get new words. And you gave me an interesting tea. You gave me nuggets of hope, and I was like, oh, I think I kind of like it because I'm just like nuggets of hope because I'm thinking of nuggets like. You know, I'm a grandma, so we, my granddaughter likes chicken nuggets, right? So I'm thinking nuggets, but there's also the nuggets. It's almost like keynotes, right? Like little pins and tools and tips that you're leaving, little nuggets along the way, little tips. Oh, what do we got there? It's a nugget of hope. Oh, oh well, look at that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I actually and, it's your, and it's in your Nugget. favorite color too. It's green. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, I have a bunch of those. So, how did you come up with the Nuggets of Hope? That's it was a couple years ago, and I was everywhere I looked or read or was listening to the word hope was everywhere, and I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you in your life but it just showed up everywhere. You know, a lot of people be like, oh, I saw the number 114 showing up. So I played the lottery. You know, it's, it was like that. <laughs> the word hope was showing up everywhere. And um, I'm a Christian. So when I, it wouldn't stop for like two weeks, it was everywhere. I read it. I would see it on billboards. I heard it on radio, um, you know, in commercials and songs and every, and I'm going, okay, what am I supposed to be doing with this? And then I realized I'm supposed to be tossing it out there. And I thought, I am one person, just some dorky chick living in Pennsylvania. How am I supposed to inspire hope in people? Because it's a pretty darn dark world. It can be. Yeah. And there's some pretty dark pockets of it, even in our own backyards. And um, so I thought about it and I'm like, all right, well, I, someone had given me a little packet of those little inspirational cards, you know, they're like business card size and they're like, you're a rock star. You're awesome. <laughs> Stuff like that. Just real simple. And I was like, someone gave me a packet of those, or I got them at a marketing or networking event one time and I saved them. So I dug those out and I just threw them in my purse and thought I'll just hand them out or whatever. So when I was out and about doing errands, I just started dropping them places. And I had like 12, maybe probably no more than that. So I'm in a store and I was like, well, I'm going to tuck these in these jean pockets. I'll put this in that sweater pocket. I'm going to put this in with the motor oil. So I was just dropping them anywhere in the store that someone might find them. And whoever finds them, I don't know, maybe it'll make them smile. Maybe it'll turn their day around. Who knows? So I thought, okay, job done. I dropped my nuggets of hope but it wouldn't stop because <laughs> <laughs> you had more nuggets. <laughs> the words, the, the word kept showing up everywhere and I'm going, what am I supposed to do? I don't understand what I, you know, and as again, I said, as a Christian, I was like, God, what, what is it you're asking me to do? Cause it was really a strong nudge, really a very strong nudge. And then I thought, okay, Kim, you're overthinking it. Just get some nuggets of hope. 
So I got online and found these stones. They're little stones, polished stones with the word hope engraved in them. And I ordered them. They're not cheap. And I'm going, what? okay, all right, I guess this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know. So I ordered them and started carrying these with me. And for I've been doing it over two years now. And uh, I approach people, just strangers. I'm like a, I'm the crazy lady approaching strangers. And I felt very strong and that's what I was supposed to do. But I'm not supposed to talk to people. I'm just supposed to offer them a nugget of hope and wish them a blessed day and then be on my way. And so I've been doing that for a little over two years. And those stories, the people, like I said, I don't stand and chat with them. But the interaction, the emotional interaction with these folks has been amazing. And the responses that I've get have just been amazing. And, you know, I've had tears, I've had hugs, I've had laughter, and I've had anger. Um, and I just took it all and wished them a blessed day and was on my way and thought, okay, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know what these people are going to do with their little stones. I have maybe that I do know one person because I don't I don't ever approach people I know with them. It's always people that are kind of pointed out to me. Like if I'm in a store, I'll walk. Oh, you by kind of someone. feel drawn to them, right? Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, oh, I'm supposed to go to that person. And I do. I just I will just approach a total stranger. And, you know, sometimes I feel really uncomfortable. And I'm not sure what that's for or if it's not my discomfort, but it's the energy they're giving off. As I feel people, I'm super empathetic. It's, and it seems to get stronger as I get older. Um, and I, it's, it's like, I can feel, I can't be around too many people at once because it's too much. Uh, yeah, I don't you know. get overwhelmed easy. Yes. So if anybody else out there is empathetic like that, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I understand it's, it's emotionally, um, draining. draining. Yeah. Very tiring. But so, you know, doing this, the stories, I, cause they turned into stories. Cause I'll be like, okay, this older gentleman yelled at me. He swore at me. We're in Walmart. And he literally said, what the hell do I have to hope for? But he still took the nugget of hope and he put it in his pocket, but he yelled at me and swore and was very angry. And he was in his eighties, probably had to have been in his eighties. And I realized, you know, I just stood there and I took it. Cause I'm like, he's not yelling at me. I have no idea what's going on in his life right now. He looks really tired. Maybe he is just coming off of being really ill and it's his first time out. Maybe he just lost his wife of 60 some years and he has no idea the kind of dish soap that she bought, but he wants that kind because that's the kind she always used and he can't find it in the damn store because that's what he was yelling at me about, the dish soap, the damn dish soap. Yeah, that's probably what it, you know, yeah, and and sometimes those to, nuggets help. Like you don't realize how much that might have helped him, right? He might have been maybe angry not that day. Maybe not that day. Way. You know, once once he got out of the store, then he's like, "Okay, she just made me relook at everything." Yeah, or you know? maybe it wasn't until the next day. You know how I I know my grandfather used to, and a lot of older gentlemen, when they get home, they empty their pockets and put everything in a bowl on their dresser or on a hall table. So. He was from that generation. So I pictured him because I literally went to my car and cried. I sat in my car and cried for that man and yeah. prayed for that man for peace, to give him peace, you know, give him a little gentleness, a gentle nudge that, that there is still peace out there. You don't have to live with bitterness and, and fear and loneliness. There is still peace within all of that. And um, I was thinking, you know, all these different scenarios of what his life might be like. And then I thought, you know what, maybe it'll be tomorrow when he goes to grab all his stuff to put back in his pocket that he picks up that nugget and looks at it and it says hope. And maybe that's when it's going to spark something. Well, when you show me the rock, I have rocks all in, in my tea room here with words <laughs> on them. And I pulled three. That's why my arm is on oh. that. <laughs> But they're all S words. So it's all, I got smile, then I got sparkle, and I got shine. I got all the S ones, but I have a bunch of other ones over there. Oh, awesome. I know I have a hope in this room. I know I do. It might be on my T shelf over there. But 
So you it's, have a whole bunch of nuggets as well. I do. Yes. When I need a picker up, I go into stores and if they got these rocks with words, I look for a word that calls me that day. It's almost like picking a card, right? When you're reading these yeah. inspirational cards, you pick a card and you're like, oh, let's go. That, let's what? go for today, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, nuggets. I, I like those nuggets. They're yeah. better than chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I decided, you know, with doing that for two, well, I'm close to closing in on three years of doing, of handing out these little nuggets of hope. Um so I decided to take my interact, some of my interactions, not all of them, some of them, and I put them in a book and created, you know, wrote the book called Nuggets of Hope. That's coming out in November this of this year of 2024. Um, so I'm looking forward to that coming out because it's a, uh, it's pretty personal, but then there's a lot of practical things in there about, you know, why can't you be kinder? The, what's yeah. stopping you from being kinder? What's stopping you from changing your small slice of the world into a better place? You don't have to be a world changer of the whole world. You're just one person, but yeah. you can change one person's world. You know, and that's and the so thing, right? The world changers, like we have so many people that want to be great leaders and all of that. And they think, oh, I'm going to change like a million people. How about you change one person? And that one person starts with you in the mirror. And then the, and the person across the street, right? And that's what I'm doing with the tea times, Kim, is it's not about the millions. It's not about the, the numbers. It's about one person at a time, one story at a time, one tea at a time. And tonight's tea we're doing is nuggets of hope. So you're sharing your, your tea and you're spilling and we're making a mess and we're having some fun with it, yeah. you know, <laughs> because yeah. that's, that's the way life should be. Stop being so serious. We got heavy stories. All of us, we all have something that we've overcome but let's lighten it up. And I love that you're giving out those rocks. I hope I, you're going to make me look for that rock after, because I have another 12 rocks <laughs> over there, but I'm not going to get up during broadcast, but I know I have a hope in there because I, 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 I never have the same word. I have dreamed twice. I think I, I got, I just like the color and the pattern of the rock. I, it, it's a flow. I, feel. I think rocks are beautiful. Right, we should we should be collecting rocks. When we were little, we collected rocks, right? Always, I always had them in my pockets or my little tiny purses. You know, the little purse that you had when you're little. My daughter, the same way. I had to always check her pockets before I did laundry because she always had little rocks in there. <laughs> well, there were some pretty rocks out there. You, you get some shiny there ones is. and you get some flat ones. We and... would sit in the driveway. That was like one of our favorite pastimes. In the first house that we lived in, a tiny little house, we had a gravel driveway, and we would sit in the driveway, and she would very con be very content just picking out the prettiest rocks. And we would put them in a little basket, and we'd keep them. Because why not? Yeah. We should bring <laughs> rock collections back. Marbles. Like, you know? Marbles. Yeah. yeah you know, they're, coll they're, they're considered collector's items now, a lot of those older ones. Yeah. Some of them are beautiful. I would, you know, I would love to, there's a guy on YouTube. I think his name's Wild Kyle. I think it's, I think it's called Wild Kyle. And he's always um, digging in cricks and looking for artifacts and old bottles, you know, way old, like pre-1900. But he always finds marbles. Oh. Because these cricks that he's at used to be, because everybody used to just dump their stuff way, way back, you know, pre-1900. Yeah. They just dumped everything down the ravine or in a creek. Um, and he finds so many marbles and every, I'm like, I want to find a creek that has marbles. <laughs> I want to go marble hunting, but he's like in Arkansas, you know, <laughs> that's where all the marbles are. We got to go to Arkansas. All, are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, wild Kyle. I just gave him a big plug. <laughs> Check right? out his YouTube channel. It's, mm -hmm. it's a cool little channel, but yeah, he's, he's a younger guy, probably in his thirties. Him and his girlfriend oh. and friends are always out there in the creek digging around finding treasure. Yeah, it's we'll, cool. We'll, we'll have to put a tag on, on, on this video and, and get Wild Kyle there. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, Wild Kyle, if you do see this, I love your YouTube channel. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kim, now I'm going to take you on a different path. We're going to go to the paw prints. Okay. 
so how'd you get the title of your books, Paw Prints? The first one, Jake came out in 2023, was Paw Prints on the Couch, yeah, which I think is really cute. Like, <laughs> And we had Paw two Paw live Paw kitty cats. No, we had three because Jennifer had two cats today. They were during our podcast that afternoon session. So, And I was like, oh, and we're talking about Paw Prints tonight. So isn't that cute? Like, Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, Paw Prints on the Couch. It's an anthology. Um, both of them are Paw Prints on the Couch and Paw Prints on the Kitchen Floor. I um, I had a dog. His name was Digger. I had him for 14 years. And he was the best dog. Just like everybody's dog is the best dog. But for me, uh, I live with PTSD. And he was not trained as a service animal or anything. But he kind of, he, he was just intuitive. He was probably the smartest dog I've ever met or known. Um, and he was just so in tune with me, so in tune with me. And I remember prior when I was thinking of doing a book, I was thinking of him and thinking of all the times, cause we walk all the time and he loved water. He would see a puddle and he would just go in and he was a big dog, 105 pounds, big dog, lab shepherd mix. And he would go and sit in a puddle, just sit in a puddle, whether it was two inches or seven inches deep. And he would just sit and he wouldn't want to move. <laughs> but whenever we got home, I always had muddy paw prints everywhere. And I remember thinking as he was aging. How much I was going to miss cleaning up those paw prints. And so I thought, you know what? There's so many people out there that absolutely adore their pets and they are family members. They're not just a dog or a cat or an iguana. They're family members. Yeah. And I bet you there's some out there that would like to share their stories. So I reached out to a few people because I wanted to share Digger's story. And um, Digger had his own Facebook page for the last six years of his life. And he had quite the following. <laughs> and he was a wise old man. That's I always called him my old man. And he was very wise because he was teaching all of us humans little lessons each day. And people started messaging back, you know, well, how come Digger didn't have a lesson for us today? Or how come Digger didn't have a story for us today? <laughs> they forgot that it was actually me who was writing this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I saved all those stories. There's six years of conversation. There are conversations between me and Digger. Um, but Digger's always the smartest one, of course. And I saved all of them. And I was, everybody's like, you got to put those in a book. But every time I, I go to work on it, I start crying. <laughs> And so I thought, okay, in the meantime, I'm going to reach out to others because I know there's so many out there that want to share stories or, you know, given the opportunity, they probably would want to share. So I reached out and that's how Paw Prints on the Couch came to be. I just reached out to a few people and said, you know, you want to share a story? I know you've got dogs. I know you adore your dogs. Uh, you want to share a story? You know, 1500 words, short story, just something to let us get to know your dog. And they're, everybody was like, without fail, fail. They're all like, oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Well, I've never written anything. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if you've ever written it. You don't have to be professional. That's what editors, that's what editors are for, you know? Um, so, and, and it's funny because half the people in the book had never written anything before and they were so excited to be published. And I was like, you know, this is turning out to be something so much more than I anticipated. And it was really a, a really fun a fun uh, project, fun project to do. And it was very well received. People love their pets. And it's kind of, you know, I kind of compare it to uh, like a Jack Canfield chicken soup for the soul book. That's kind of like what it's like, you know, if you need a, a reference point. So yep. that's how the paw prints on the couch is. And then I've got one that's coming out this month, 21st, just a couple weeks from now. Um, August 21st, Paw Prints on the Kitchen Floor, the second installment with a whole new batch of pet parents that have penned their stories of their, you know, their beloved pets. And the whole process, the whole point of it is to spread that peace and that love, you know, um, yeah. because pets are just their souls, are, their hearts and souls are so pure. You know, and humans could be that way too if they wanted to be, you know, and 
animals are just unconditional and they give back so much more love than what they receive. It's just amazing to me. And they're the perfect little beings, you know, as long as humans don't ruin them. Because I, I sincere, there's, I don't believe that there is a bad pet, but there are a lot of bad humans. Um, or those that aren't bad humans, they just don't know how to train or care for a pet. Um, cause it's a big response. That's a, that's a, a lifetime, that pet's lifetime responsibility. You can't just get a pet and say, Oh, how cute. Let's get a puppy. No. Do you have the finances, the time and the energy and all of the resources needed to care for that pet for its lifetime, which could be 12, 15, 18 years. Can you do that? And if you can't, then you should not have a pet. And that's the conversations we should be bringing to the table too, right? When people are getting pets, uh, you know, because usually Christmas time, everybody gets a little puppy and then or, six months that puppy grows up to be a bigger, well, I want a new puppy. Well, that's not or how they're it peeing works. in the house. They're, I don't want him peeing in the house. We'll train him not to in a gentle way. Train him not to, you know, my dogs have all been rescues. So you don't know what you're getting. You know, you don't know the traumas that they may have experienced. And some of them have come out of really horrendous situations and they still come out wanting love. Yeah. Just, you know, oh gosh. And it, both my second one here, the one I have now, Dexter, I don't know what he went through, but when I got him, he was very sick and very skinny and really skittish. So I don't know what he went through, but I realized, okay, this might be tougher than it was with Digger. And you've got to give them time to decompress. Yeah. You can't just get a dog and expect them. Oh, they're not going to pee in the house. They're not going to chew on something. They're not going to have accidents or whatever. You cannot expect that. They don't speak English. They can't tell you, I have a really bad stomach ache. So I just pooped by the back door. Yeah. You know, I mean, gosh, Dexter, he was so ill. He had diarrhea. So I was cleaning that up and he would run and hide in a corner. And I'm like, there, no fear here. It's okay. I'm well, it sorry. It takes a lot of time for adjustment too, right, Kim? Because right. the situation that they were in, they don't know they're going to a new home. So they're not sure if they're going to get the same thing or even worse. Scary. Right. Yeah. And there's, there's a, th it's a thing I go by and I've shared it um, on other platforms. Three, three, three. Three days, three weeks, and three months. Those are the time frames that you need for a new animal. Three days, decompress. Because like you just said, they don't know why they're with you. Are they going to stay? Are you going to be mean to them? Are they going to be able to have food and water? Are they going to be able to sleep comfortably, safely? Can they feel safe? Three days, decompress. Three weeks, you work with them. Gentleness, patience, love. Let them become who they're meant to be. Let them assure them that they're safe. And by three months, their personality should be shining. They should be comfortable. They should be running around, licking your face and leaving paw prints all over your kitchen floor and all over your couch, you know? Right. So yeah, three, three, three. Simple to remember. I, I, I like that. So for all the listeners up there, three, 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 give, and give them time, you know? Um, and pets don't have a voice, so they can't tell you, like Kim said, like, you know, um, and I find that pets are brought into our lives to make us open our hearts because sometimes we just close our hearts because we have so much going on as human beings, right? That we just, so then we get this pet and this pet understands us, comes to us when we, when we're having a hard time and we're like, no, go away. Like I, it's already, you know, and they keep coming back for more and more. I, I have cats, but I also have uh, dogs for grandkids. Like my, all my kids who have pets, they're, those are my grandbabies as well, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. when they hear the word grandma, they get all hyper and they're like, oh, grandma's here. Like They they, <laughs> they kind of tackle me down. Right? I can't even get in the door sometimes. And I'm like, whoa, guys. <laughs> my daughter's dog is the same way. She says, she goes, mom, when I tell them grandma's coming, they both lose their minds. She goes, yeah. they run down the basement stairs and wait for you at the back door. <laughs> and I'm like... Because I have to explain to them, she's not going to be here for about a half an hour. It's too early for you to wait. You know? <laughs> so they know. They're looking up and down like, what? <laughs> yeah. Animals are yeah. way smarter than we give them credit for. And I know a lot of people out there realize that. They, they realize that. But we're blessed. I think they are blessings that are put in our lives for a reason. And we should treat the blessings 
with the care that we're meant to. Yeah. So Kim, you got the, you got the first anthology with the couch. So are all the stories based on paw prints on couches? And no. the second one on kitchen No, that's just the name of the book because I remember back, you know, for years, for 14 years. And then now again, with the dog I have now, um, all the paw prints that I clean up because I, we walk a lot. We, I live in the country. So we're out in all weather, which I love. And the dogs get me out there and they love it. And I've constantly has, I constantly am cleaning up paw prints. And so that's how the, the name of the book paw prints on the couch came. That one was from Digger because I remember all those he would run in the house and jump on the couch before I could catch him. And I'd be like, ah, okay, well, I'll just, I'll <laughs> here just we go again. <laughs> no big deal, you know? And then uh, the first book was, it was kind of a hit, you know? Um, it did, it did pretty well and people really enjoyed it. And then I had other people saying, are you going to do another one? Because I have a story I'd love to share, but I've never written before. And I'm like, you know, I hadn't thought of doing another one, but then here I am doing another one and it's got 20, new people in there, Sharon, and that's paw prints on the kitchen floor. And I came up with that one because that's how we walk in my house is through the back door and you're on the kitchen floor and that's where the paw prints land first. So <laughs> paw prints Coming on in that door. <laughs> and I'm constantly, you know, mopping up and wiping up muddy foot or paw prints on my kitchen floor. So it was funny, a friend of mine the other day, she's from uh, England and she was saying, oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to get you know, she had just ordered the pre-ordered the ebook and she goes, I can't wait to get the paperback. She goes, are you going to do a third one and make it a series? And I said, you know, I don't know. Cause it's a really, it, it's a tremendous amount of work putting an anthology is, together. A whole lot of work. I don't think people realize just how I, much I, work I, I've been in eight and it's a lot of work. It's back and forth with editors. And then the other stories have to, you have to wait for all the other stories to come in. It's a lot of work. But it's it's a teamwork, right? It's working all together, and then at the end, the the reward is getting to know these people as well. When you're yeah. an anthology, right? You check out. Well, oh, how close yeah. is this one? How close is that one? And I've I've met some some cool people that I didn't know before from from them participating in this project, and we still keep in touch. You know, so it's it's really it's really fun, and um. So this one for the kitchen floor, I was talking to my friend and she goes, well, if you do a third one, why, why don't you call it paw prints on the porch? And I went, well, why didn't I think of that one myself? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You got your, you're ready yeah, for the third one when, when you're ready for it. So yeah, they've been, it's been a fun journey the, the last couple of years. Cause I didn't plan on doing another one so soon. Cause it's literally paw prints on the couch came out last August. And this one paw prints on the kitchen floor is coming out this month, this August. So exactly a year from last, the last book. So I didn't plan on doing one so soon, but people just kept asking. So I thought, uh, okay, let's just put it together. And, you know, coordinate, like I said, coordinating it, bringing it all together, getting the editors and all of that. And, um, it's a lot of work on my half, uh, because I, I read all the stories and I do like a pre-screen of them and, you know, need to get clarification on some, cause a lot of the people had never written before. And so that there's a lot of work involved in that, but the end result and then their excitement, you know, when they, when they're like going, I have a, I'm in a book, <laughs> I'm published in a book, you know, that's exciting stuff. You know, it is and when you get your from when you write for the first, first time, I remember when I wrote in my first one, Kim, and I got it, I was like, oh my God, like somebody, because it went the number one international bestseller. And I was like, oh my God, somebody in Rome is reading my story right now. Oh, you, you know, yeah. you have just, wow, I'm in a book and yeah. now you're out there for life, right? In 20 years, that book might be found and somebody might read it and say, oh, this is really incredible. You know, that's, that's the other thing. Yeah. It's out there forever. Right. And you're leaving well, your nuggets again. It goes right back to your nuggets of hope. And all the these stories, yeah. All these stories. Oh gosh. And I tell everybody for both books, you're going to, you're going to laugh out loud. You're going to smile. You're going to grin. You're going to be like, Oh, and you're going to like be reflective and remembering, and you're also going to cry. So make sure you've got a good cup of coffee and uh, you know, a new box of tissues with you when you pick up the book, because it, it's, you know, we're not, nothing is sugar coated. Pets die, yep. you know, and their lifespans are much shorter than humans, obviously. 
but I also believe that they're as long, their lifespans are as long as they're meant to be because they're put in your, per, your personal life for a reason. And I was blessed with Digger for 14 years. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, how amazing. And people always have a tendency to, to focus on that last day or two. And I know I did the same thing because I was so, so, so sad. I was so crushed. It took me three months to not be mm -hmm. crying every day after I had to say goodbye to Digger. It was really, really, really hard. And I know a lot of other people, many, many, that it hits them the same way. But then I was like, Kim, quit focusing on the last day or two when it was so hard. You had 14 years of amazing blessing where that dog would just have you laughing and oh my goodness, the hugs that he accepted and all the tears that fell on his fur and he just accepted it. And all the times that he pulled me out of a nightmare or he pulled me down from an anxiety attack because just because he was there or he saw it before I even realized I was having an anxiety attack, panic coming up on me. Well, that's what I mean, right? They can sense it, right? They come they to us and they were wondering, why are you coming to me? Like, I, I didn't call you. Like, you know, my cat does that. My cat can sense when my anxiety is really high, she'll come and she'll snuggle and yeah. get really right into me. And I'm just like, not now, but I know now after a couple of months of her doing it all the time, I'm like, okay, she's, she can feel that. Right. Thing. She's just, she's re and I'm like, oh, you're getting my attention. You're refocusing me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and, and, and it changes the mindset too. Right. Because Absolutely. you might be in that moment. Right. And then that, that pet comes like, and then you start to pet the, the cat or the dog and you know you kind of get out of it and you move forward right move on. yes or you or you have somebody to talk to i know my cat and me we're like uh, my spouse always says we're all, you guys ever going to get along and i'm just like well she she wants me to leave the tap on for her and i'm done in the bathroom now i got to go back and turn the tap off and she's <laughs> a rah, 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 and i was like like you know, and I taught her how to give high five and my, my kids were like, mom, she's not a dog. She's a cat. And I was like, yeah, so yeah. She, <laughs> and, and she gives me high five to get a treat. If she doesn't give me high five, no treat. Like, you know, no, I talked to, I talked, well, I talked to Digger daily and now with, you know, with, I've got my guy here, Dexter. Well, he's passed out beside me on the floor right now, <laughs> but uh, I talked to him every, all the time, all the time. And then he talks back. And the interesting thing I said earlier, he was, um, I don't know what situation he came from, but he was very ill and skittish and skinny. And he didn't make a sound for months. Wow. Not a single. And I was like, but then in my head, because I would have these conversations going on, like Digger, the conversations that I wrote with him all the time on Facebook and all that, he was always the wise older man, you know? Dexter in my head, his voice comes across as a 12 year old boy. I don't know why that's just what it is. So when I talked to him or when he gets, when he did start to make noise, I was like, Oh, you can talk now. See, that's see, it's okay. Now tell me whatever you want. But I, I was, it was so hard seeing how fearful he was of everything. It was really hard for me. I really, it was a big, thing of patience I had to work on. Cause I was just like, I just want to love you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Come here. I want to hug. <laughs> yeah. But he would run away. He wanted nothing to do with it. And he would curl himself into the smallest ball he could. And he's a big dog. And I was like, this is awful. You know? And they did, he, he went right with the three, three and three. It was by three months, his little personality is coming out. And it took three months when he made, when he made his first noise. Oh, wow. And I was like, Oh, and he had a very raspy, uh, like, it was like he tried to bark, but he couldn't. And when I got him, his throat here was really swollen. And I think that was from abuse because wow. something was, I mean, so not right. And so I, I don't put a collar on him. I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I picture someone just, yanking him up and holding him by and that's probably why he didn't make a sound for so long i think probably because maybe he used to and he was always beat afterwards 
Well, he was a puppy, right? And puppies get happy and they bark and they, you know. I got him. He was about two years old when I got him. So Lord knows what that poor guy went through. But his throat was, because I was like, why is at the, because I got him from a rescue shelter. I was like, why is his throat so, it was so noticeably swollen. And they're like, we're not sure. We don't know the situation we came from. We found him. He, he was pulled as a stray. And so I was like, oh, I'm glad he got a chance to run away then. That was my first thought. I'm glad he got a chance to run away. And yeah, he's sick and ill right now, but he's got me now. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing like that will ever happen. So I had to train him that there is no fear in my house. Ever, ever, ever. And um, so when he first made a noise, he, it was like he tried to bark, but it was really like, almost like he couldn't. And that's when I was like, buddy. And I'm like, you know, so I started rubbing his throat and he didn't really care for that at first, but then he realized, oh, okay. She's not trying to hurt me. Yeah. And, but it took, I would say probably a solid year before he had a solid bark where that raspiness went away and he no longer has the swelling because I don't put it, he does not wear a collar. I only put a harness on him. I will never put a collar on him. Wow. Yeah. So we, I put a harness, you know, we go for walks and stuff and we're, if we, we leave the realm. That's what I call where I'm the queen, by the way, the queen of my realm. So when we leave the realm, he, I just, I put a harness on him. I don't, or if I do put a collar on, I put it really loose, but I don't use it. You know, I what, I really, what I really like him that what you did with Dexter is when I did some research and I seen Dexter was the office manager. I was like, that is so cute. Like, you know, giving our pets a job, on track. <laughs> <laughs> you know, giving the job to the pet. And I was oh, like, okay. I, I could use a secretary. I could get Tinkerbell to be my secretary. Exactly. You know? See, well, now I'm in my office right now. And I just told you he's, he's sleeping right beside me because, you know, being an office manager is a very tiring job <laughs> and it's almost 8 PM where we're at. So his day's done. He's ready yeah. for bed. But yeah, he keeps me on track. He uh, That's why he's my office manager, because he lets me know when I need a walk. He lets me know when I need to get a drink and he lets me know when I need a treat. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cute. And, and Dexter has his own Facebook page as well. He does. Yes. And I haven't done a whole lot with it or I, I'm sorry, Dexter hasn't done a whole lot with it <laughs> for quite some time, actually. But yeah, we did. Uh, we did start that. And he would, you know. He messes with me and says, you have to keep on typing all the stuff up, mom, because I don't have thumbs. So he can't type. He's for taking himself. a nap. <laughs> he's, he's busy doing his office manager things. And sometimes that entails chasing a squirrel or something, you know, so you have to keep the realm safe. So that's that's another big part of his job is keeping the realm safe from those nasty squirrels and chipmunks. <laughs> Well, I think it's really cute that you, you gave him a Facebook page. Like, I think it's, a, you know, sometimes well, he has, he's got um, in the kitchen on, in this book, the newest one, he wrote the forward. You know how there's always a forward in a book yep. that you usually have someone else that writes, you know, and gives you, you know, oh, this is going to be an awesome book. Don't, well, Dexter actually wrote the forward for kitchen or paw prints on the kitchen floor. And, you know, people want to wonder why, well, it's because he's a smart dog. That's why. So <laughs> You're right. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good dog. That's right. You just held up the book because I seen, I think it was two days ago, you did every, you got a package and you were like, boop, boop. And I was like, what you got? What you got? <laughs> I have no idea why I kept saying boop. <laughs> I was excited. The package came in the mail. I got my proof copy. So it's got, you know, this gray stripe across it. Can't, you know, not for resale. But I finally got the proof copy. And that's always exciting when you get that first copy and it might not be the perfect yet. You know, that's why you get proof copies to look through. But it was just so exciting. And I'm like, I got to make a little video and put this on, because, especially for all of the uh, 19 other co-authors that are in the book to show them, hey, you know what? We're in the home stretch now. So, yeah, I kept saying boop. I don't know why. I have no idea. And I think I even said that in the video. I have no idea why I'm saying boop. <laughs> Yeah, because I watched it and I was like, okay, what you got? What you got? I know she got something from Amazon. And then when I <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yes. And she's coming on tea time with the new book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm a dork. Like I said earlier at the top of the show, I'm a dork. But yeah, why not? 
And, you know, and the thing is, if I, and I don't get on and do stuff like that very often um, on social media and stuff like that. I found recent, and I don't know, this is just for me, my own self. I found that there's so much negative on there. I I stay off of it of, of all platforms. And the only time I am on there is when I am actively searching for something inspiring. Yeah. And so I thought, you know what, Kim, instead of sitting there saying, I'm not going to be on social media anymore. Why don't you get on there and do what you're looking for? So do something fun, do something inspiring. And so, you know, maybe this isn't inspiring to people, but it's, it's a nice read and people are going to get something from at least one story in there. Every story might not be for the reader, but there's one story in there that's going to touch your soul. It's going to well, and that's the thing, right? With anthologies, right? They're anthologies probably. bring you that offer. You know, and if one story doesn't resonate with you, the next one will. And and that's what I enjoyed doing when I was in the a bunch of anthologies as well is getting to know the different stories, and saying, you know what, maybe the, the book came the bestseller not because of my story, but because of the other story that's in the book. Right? Had that story not been in the book. <clears throat> would it be a bestseller? Right. You know what I mean? So we yeah. have to look at it that way, that all the stories come together. Reads. There's a lot of people that, and I and I like to look at it this way too, because I've talked to folks, they're like, you know, I'm not really a reader. I don't like reading novels. And I'm like, well, then this is the perfect type of book for you because they're 15, they're, the stories are like two and a half pages long, each yeah. story. So you can carry that in your tote bag, your, your car, your purse for when you're sitting there waiting on the kids from soccer practice or dance lessons, whatever the case may be, you're sitting waiting in the doctor's office, you can pull it out and you can read a story or two, you know, um, you don't have to sit there. You could, it, they're little bite-sized stories. So you can, you can, you know, enjoy the book in bite-sized pieces because a lot of folks I know, or they say, Oh, I don't have time to read. I don't know how people can ever say that. Cause I read all the time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm a nerd, man. I got books all over. I, and I keep getting told no more books. And I was like, oh, I just need one more. <laughs> one more. I just cleaned out books. I have so many. So I'm sure you understand. I just cleaned out and took them to Salvation Army because I was like, okay, Kim, this is actually even too much for you. Yes. <laughs> but I, I had... Um, two garbage bags and two big boxes full of books wow. that I donated. But I went through them two and three times because there's those books that's like, Oh no. Cause I reread that every year. I got to keep that one. <laughs> so right. books I are hard to get rid of. I did pull a lot back out, but I got rid of a bunch cause I'm sitting there. I'm also at, like I said, in a certain season of my life where I'm trying to get rid of stuff. I literally don't need and Minimize downsize that. just a little bit because I still live in the big old house that I raised my family in, you know, and it's way too big for me and my dog, but I've been here 30 years and wow. I just love it. It's my realm, you know, but someday, someday, who knows when I reach a different season, I might not be able to do all of this. So I'm trying now little bits by little bits where it's not so emotionally overwhelming to clean certain areas of the house out. Yeah. Well, I and think so as we get as we get into those seasons, Kim, we do want to minimize, right? Because we don't want our children to be stuck with all of this stuff. Uh, exactly. My kids say it all the time, Mom, I don't want to get stuck with all your tea stuff. And I'm like, okay, got it. I got it. I no more tea stuff. Guess I have I yeah, have it's ridiculous. It's, you know, you have a lifetime. And and I'm sitting there going, my my daughter, because I say the same thing to my daughter, you know, I, I'm I'm getting rid of this stuff because someday you're an only child it's all falling on you yeah i go so do you want to have to go through all of this or you want me to do as much as i can you know while i'm still here not that i plan on going anywhere anytime yeah. soon but and and it just also it's actually it's mentally good for me and the more i'm doing it the more i feel a weight coming off the more I'm, cause I'm really, I'm really getting into it this summer. I mean, I've like banged out some big projects. I'm like, I'm getting this done and this is getting cleaned out and this is getting clean. And I just finished the third one, which was my biggest, which was the garage. And I'm like, 
it just feels it's so much weight came. I feel so much better. <laughs> it, 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 it's light. Like you don't yes. realize how much stuff puts the weight on. Right. And, you know, and I don't, I often wonder, cause I'm, I'm a veteran and I often wondered, okay, is that because military, I like things a certain way. Um, but I also live with PTSD and I like things a certain way. Yeah. I don't know if anybody caught that nuance of my change of tone, but if anybody's <laughs> out there that lives with PTSD, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. If it's not in a certain way, then it, it, it causes anxiety. It causes stress. Uh, I live with CPTSD and it, when things are not in order, I, I'm just like, like if somebody would come in here and move my tea room, I would be like, Oh, a panic attack big time. It's too much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's too much. I, I get it. I hear you sister. <laughs> so, so what do you do for your PTSD to help you get over it, Kim? Um, there, I've learned a lot of things uh, over the years, and I, I, I talked to a counselor, um, and I no shame in that. I used to not ever share that, but now I do, yeah, because there might be somebody else sitting out there going, yeah, but if it helps somebody or nudges somebody to go talk to someone, because sometimes, sometimes you cannot do it all on your own, yeah sometimes just too damn hard. Um, and you need someone outside your bubble, your little bubble of darkness that you fall into every once in a while. You need someone outside that bubble, unbiased. They can sit there and say, okay, now let's look at this from a different direction. And then you go, oh, oh. You know, right. so, it's a nugget of hope. You need yes. hope from someone else. Yes. And so it's, there's no shame and putting your pride to the side and asking for help. Um, it took my friends of mine that were Vietnam veterans noticing something in me years ago because I was just completely falling apart. <laughs> and they said, okay, then they call me kid because they're like 20 years older than me. Um, but they said, kid, we, we don't know what's going on in your life right now, but we recognize the symptoms. And if you don't get yourself to the VA, we will drag you there. And I did not answer in a nice, positive, gentle way. I pretty much was like, eh, bleep, 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 bleep you, bleep you, I'm fine. And they yeah. said, we will drag you if you don't go. I didn't go and they did drag me and I will be forever grateful. Well, it's almost like the dish soap, right? The man in the store when you gave the nugget of hope. Yes. It's a full circle. See how kid. all that works. All that works. Yeah. So um, little, little things, something uh, just within the last year, my counselor shared with me because I was having a really rough day. And sometimes you do. Sometimes you just have a poop day. And I was having a poop day that day. And she said, Kim, when you look in the mirror, what do you say to yourself? And I said, nothing good. And she said, first off, would you ever say to your daughter what you say to yourself? And I said, no. Never. She goes, and why do you tell yourself those things? You need to love yourself too. Yeah. And that was, that was, that kind of like hit me hard. And then the second thing is she said, now I want, when you look in the mirror, wherever, whenever it is morning, night, whatever, I want you to look in the mirror and say, look and say to yourself, Kim, you have a 100% success rate of making it through the tough stuff because here you stand, you mm -hmm. did it again. You made it through. 100% success rate. It doesn't get any better than that. And that changed so much for me. And I have it on a sticky note on my wall so I can look up and there it is. And that's the first thing I see every day when I sit down in my little office is that. Well, and those sticky notes make a difference, right? They're those nuggets again. We go right back to the nuggets of hope. Yeah, I had to. And she's like, you give out nuggets to everybody else. Why don't you give one to yourself? Right? So you and just I gave like, literally, I hadn't thought of it. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, and maybe that's a whole, that was the whole mission was to come back full circle and understand what the whole thing is about. Yeah, indeed. Yes. There's, there's a, there's an ultimate plan for everything that we go through. We Absolutely. don't know what it is. That's my belief anyway. I don't think we're supposed to, we have to, 
what did I say the other day? I had, I was talking with a guest and they said something and I said, well, my goodness, you just have to buckle up and buckle down. And he's like, oh my gosh, that's a great scene. And I went, you're right. I'm making a t-shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm actually currently working on a t-shirt with that saying on it. <laughs> well, that's a good, that's a good t-shirt to get. You know, I think we all need to buckle down and, you know, yeah, buckle up and buckle down because buckle up, sweet pea. It's a it's a bumpy ride. It is, but it's worth it. Yeah. So that's you know, if if nothing else, if nothing else, my nuggets of hope. I want it to reach the person who thinks that living isn't worth it, and I want them to see that word hope, that little nugget, and maybe that'll make them stop and say, oh, okay. Okay, maybe I can make it through another day. Maybe I can make it through the next 10 minutes. Because sometimes that's all you can do is make it through the yeah. next 10 minutes. Absolutely. But then you're at the end of the day and you're like, oh my God, I made it through another day. Woohoo! That's a win. That is a win. Yeah. So that's and what I, I want. Those are the little wins that. That, we, that we take for granted. Or we don't acknowledge. You we know, don't acknowledge just getting out of bed. Thing. Yes. Sometimes yeah. just brushing your teeth. You're like, okay, I brushed my hair and I brushed my teeth today. That's a win. I'm going to count that as a win because it is. Yeah. Some days it are is. hard. So Kim, any final message that you have for everyone out there? And when can they get this book? I know they can get the pre-order of uh, the uh, paw prints on the kitchen floor, but your uh, Nuggets of Hope is coming out in November, correct? Yes. mid -Nove I think it's around mid-November. I'm drawing a complete blank on the exact day. I don't know why, but it's mid-November uh, is Nuggets of Hope. But Paw Prints on the Kitchen Floor, you can pre-order right now the um, ebook for 99 cents. And then it will be out along with paperback version on the 21st of this month. So yay. It's ex awesome. I'm excited. I'm excited. So. Well, it was a real pleasure having you tonight. And, and, and we went down some real rabbit holes and had some fun and had some nuggets and got some marbles out there and got some stones. Yeah, wild cow. Don't forget wild cow. <laughs> we really had some fun. But I want to thank all the listeners and, and audience that participated in tonight's show and, and joined in and uh, left your comments and said thank you and beautiful conversation. I, I seen all those comments. So thank you for all of that. Um, and I will be back on the 13th with a rescheduled tea time with uh, Gail and Gregory Horg, who will be in and we'll be talking about sacred geometry. And we're going to be talking about the universe and alignment and all that good stuff. And then on the 15th, I have two new guests that are coming in with their TA. And then on the 20th, I have Pepper Ann, who is a returning guest from season four. She'll be coming back on and giving us an update on her true crime storybook of the Texas, uh, um, not Texas Ranger. I'm going to, she's going to bloop me. She's going to boot me in. <laughs> <laughs> but Pepper Ann will be back on the 20th. And then on the 22nd, we're closing up with two other guests with TEA. So be sure to check out all those tea times. And again, thank you all for joining me. And let's just keep spilling tea and sharing the stories and words. And let's make a difference and leave some nuggets of hope. And if you got nuggets, I'd like to hear about them leave them in the comments and let kim know about your nuggets of hope and let's keep spreading that little nugget out there uh and thank you again for joining me kim thank you for everybody joining in tonight and i will see everybody back on the 13th for a new tea with all of you guys <laughs>